Um, do you have yet, Tony, a uh, release date for the Chicano rap documentary? That's, I'm going to take a two-part question. And do you regret even attempting to make the Chicano rap documentary? You know what? I, I'm, I'm trying to decide which one to answer first. <laughs> I don't want to say regret because when I set out to do this, I got a phone call from a close friend that told me, be careful doing that. And I said, why? He said, because I tried it before, he goes, and my own people backstabbed me. Mm-hmm. He said, they knew that I had a budget, but when they knew I had a budget, now they all want to get paid. He said, I'm not going to pay for interviews, bro. I'm going to shine light on you. So when I released my mixery that I did out of my own pocket, I almost went broke with that. But I did that in remembrance and honoring Steve. I only started to podcast just to promote that. I remember that. And then the podcast took a life of its own. So we just kept it going. So what happened was I said, look, I got the right team. I got the right plan. Let me go ahead and uh, ask people if you like this, maybe you might want me to do a Chicano one. You know, because anybody that I was calling was saying, yeah, yeah, I'm down, I'm down. So we started one and our budget, we saw how much all of our equipment was going to cost. It was going to cost about $13,000. Easy, yes. Okay. So we said, let's get a budget of 15. We hit 20. And within a matter of weeks. Yeah, it was quick. I saw that, man. Yeah. A lot of people don't know. And, and I don't say this to talk shit about anybody, but I want to lay down the facts on why it took so long to even get to where we're at when it comes to this documentary. I had a guy working for me named John Elkins. It was the white dude. He was my right-hand man. I trusted this guy with everything. This guy had every password to my website, to my YouTube, to everything. I trusted this guy, and I would pay him monthly. And he was making good money, okay? We were making good money as far as, like, monetization off the website, the, the mixtapes that we were uh, reproducing. And uh, we were about to release a documentary on DVD. It was sky's the limit. We were making so much good money that we were about to move into another building. I remember that. Okay. And um, it kind of, I just kind of, this part in short. He got scared when things went south with uh, uh, Night on Royal. And then when this girl came out with his false allegations, he, he got scared. Okay. Somebody started sending him his, uh, um, his address. Like through a fake page. And posted it and stuff. Yes. And so he came back to me and he said, bro, I started this like to have fun, you know, but now I'm getting threatened. The only other person that had his address was that girl. Was that girl, Sandy, the one that we call Sandy Pants. Right. Okay. She, she's the only one that had his address. And the only reason why she had his address, because he was supposed to shoot her OnlyFans pictures at his house. And, but that just never happened. Okay. Well... I know it was her that gave away because she's giving away my address as well and others individuals, even our numbers, okay? So he got scared, and one day, he just packed up and left. He left with the footage that we had for the Chicano rap. He left after I paid him, and he left with half of the equipment, okay? So people, I'm not going to go public with that. So what I did, whatever was left, I just bought more equipment, what, it, what he left with, and I got my team together, a, a new team. We started filming, COVID, COVID hits. Nobody wants to do interviews. Yeah, everything shut down. So now we have to reshoot everything that he took. And that's what happened. Uh, we're halfway done, like I said before. We haven't started editing anything. Uh, the, and the reason why I don't want to promote it, because the mistake that I learned Never start promoting something before it's done. Yes. <laughs> and and I, I was doing that with my first one. Echas la sal. Yeah. So now, um, a lot of people, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, okay? Sure. A lot of people, how in the hell are you going to do one documentary and cover 30 years or 32 years of Chicano rap? My goal was never to cover 30 years of r- Chicano rap in, in one uh, uh, documentary, you have to think the way Hulu thinks, Netflix thinks, Showtime thinks, HBO think. Okay? They want content. They just don't want one. My whole plan was bigger. I was going to do, or I'm go- I plan to do still, a docu-series. Right. Okay? That's all I'm going to say. You know, because the way I think is differently from the way 
the, the, the general public thinks, here's what they say, where's the money, where's the money? But I do want to say this. Before Night Owl and Royalty and this girl Sandy went live and started talking about me, not one person ever questioned me. Not one person, where's the money, where's yeah, the, the not one person. But it was them, and it was people that were hating on me, not because of what I was doing, but because it was me that was doing it.